all over the world, millions of species clash in nature's savage battle of survival. On land, in the sea, and in the air, all are locked in deadly conflict. Animals fight tooth and claw to win food, territory, and rights to the bloodline. From the deserts of Africa to the swamps of Florida, there are no rules. This is Animal Fight Night. Alaska, home to the mighty brown bear. One of the strongest and most dangerous animals in North America. They can tower up to eight feet tall on their hind legs. Weighing up to 1,300 pounds, they're one of the largest carnivores on Earth. They need 90 pounds of food a day to survive. And if they don't get it, it's hardcore carnage. It's July, and prime time for feasting on calorie-rich salmon. Even with plenty to go around, tempers flare. This mother bear is here to feed with her six-month-old cubs. A risky move. Any male bear anywhere near them spells serious danger. Adult males are a major killer of bear cubs. This five-year-old male is new to the territory. The cubs may look cute, but for this hungry bear, they're in his way, and he wants them gone. Mom's not having any of it. Her only option in this fight, go for him full throttle. Brown bear's curved front claws are up to six inches long. They're thick and sharp like knives and can rip straight through the bodywork of a car. He's almost twice her size, but for her, the loss of her bloodline is at stake. And that's how you take down an opponent twice your own size. Don't give them a single second to fight back. Calling on every shred of her strength, she pushes the big bear backwards. There's up to 150 pounds of solid muscle concentrated in the mom's shoulders, hump, and buttocks, giving her amazing strength and speed. He lands a blow, but soon backs down. This fight's not worth the effort. He'll find somewhere else to eat. He heads for the best fishing spot in the river and starts to chow down on some salmon. Things are looking up, or at least they were. The fishing rights here belong to this six-year-old bear. He's the boss around here. And as far as he's concerned, any intruder is dead meat. heavyweight champions are now locked in a turf war. There's no backing out of this contest. The lowered head is a threat. A lesser bear would beat a retreat, but the intruder is a good match for the old boss. The 
Boss Bear flashes his razor-sharp two-inch-long canines and lunges first. Adult male bears rarely fight, but when they do, the wounds are savage. Both bears target the loose skin around their opponent's neck to try and get a firm grip. Bears have huge brain cases, which provide a large surface area for muscles to power their devastating bite. They can bite with a force strong enough to pierce a cast iron skillet. With the intruder down in a submissive position, the boss thinks he's got this fight in the bag. But using every fiber of muscle, the intruder wrestles his way back into the fight. He uses the muscles in his forelimbs. They're anchored to thick bones farther away from the pivoting joint compared to other animals. This makes them slower, but gives them essential leveraging power. With the force of five humans, the intruder pumps up his forelimbs for a final effort. He throws all his weight against the boss. It's the decisive move. The boss falls, literally knocked from his throne. It's a crushing defeat in front of a huge crowd. The other bears add insult to injury, forcing the old boss farther down the river. For the intruder, it's been a good day after all. He is the new king bear in town, with top place at the dining table. Brute force wins big fights, but some battles need brains, too. Cuttlefish win the prize for one of the most alien creatures on Animal Fight Night. Masters of illusion, they have an amazing ability to change color, shape, and texture. Covered with over 20 million pigment cells, they give off a light show in spectacular high definition. They dazzle their prey, then suck them up with lightning speed. It's late May in the coastal waters of southern Australia, and that means breeding season for the Australian giant cuttlefish. For these crazy creatures, it's do or die. They only get one shot during their entire lifetime to pass on their genes. Males outnumber females 10 to 1, so the odds of mating are stacked against them. Adult males can be over three feet long. Females, around half the size. The males try to outdo each other by sparking up zebra-style body patterns. This large 22-pound male is guarding access to a rock where a lady cuttlefish is playing hard to get. He wants her all for himself. Then, a wannabe love rival gets too close for comfort. The mantle is the cuttlefish's power motor. He sucks water into this cavity and then uses strong muscles to force it through a funnel, which propels him forward like a jet engine. In a move called the shovel, he thrusts his eight arms close together, forming a pointed spear shape, and then lunges at his rival. It's a clear message to shove off. But the other guy's also desperate to get the girl. The two love rivals lock on. As well as eight arms, they use two tentacles 
normally hidden in pockets behind the eyes. These are also covered in suckers used to latch on to their prey. It's a full-on wrestling match. Both contenders twist in a smothering grip. The goal, drag the other guy close enough to deploy their secret lacerating weapon. A sharp and lethal beak that's just over two inches long, hidden at the base of their arms. They use it to attack and dismember prey or against other suitors. The defender savages the love rival. Success. The rival ejects an inky smoke screen and makes a speedy exit. But the defender hasn't covered all of his bases. A smaller male pulls off a cunning trick. He might not have the muscle, but he's still a master of disguise. Time to get creative. He shrinks by pulling in his longer arms and adopts a mottled color to look like a female. It works like a charm. Unnoticed, he cruises right past the macho males to the lady hiding underneath the rock. Even though he's smaller than the others, she accepts his advances. Once he's fertilized her, he drops the disguise and looks like a male again. The bigger fella may have won the fight, but the smart guy got the girl. Disguise isn't usually an option. Most battles are fought with full-on face-to-face fury. The dense woodlands of Kruger National Park the perfect habitat for leopards, Africa's most elusive big cat. With a lean, well-muscled body that's around six and a half feet long and weighing up to 140 pounds, they may not be as big as lions and tigers, but they're one of the most agile of all the big cats. They need to eat over seven pounds of meat a day, but making a killing is only half the battle. This large five-year-old leopard has just bagged himself his first meal in over eight days. He thinks he's safe up in a tree, but he's wrong. A lioness helps herself, and he's left with nothing. The next morning, he's even more desperate to eat. This might just be his lucky day. He's come across a half-eaten carcass, and the owners are nowhere in sight. It's a terrible mistake. In the savanna, there's no such thing as a free lunch. The battle of the big cats is on. This male leopard is taking a massive risk. Desperate to eat, he approaches an abandoned carcass, thinking the coast is clear. But the owners haven't finished with it yet. A lioness batters him with a powerful right hook. 58% of a lion's body is pure skeletal muscle, the largest percentage of any mammal on Earth. A single blow could snap a human neck. It looks like a knockout punch, but the leopard dodges and rolls with it. At 300 pounds, the lioness is more than double his weight, but she needs to land a clean bite. And to do that, 
she's got to get past his lethal claws. Like all big cats, leopards have five claws on the front paws and four on the back. Their claws are two inches long and are constantly sharpened when climbing trees. But then the cavalry arrives. Three more lionesses want to show him who's top cat on the savanna. A lioness's skull contains deep ridges for the attachment of powerful muscles that support her jaw and its 30 teeth. These muscles allow her to create bite pressures of around 1,000 pounds per square inch. The lionesses could kill the leopard by severing his spinal cord. To survive, he's got to stay on his back. He spins around and swipes not one, not two, but three of the lionesses. It's a masterclass in big cat survival moves. But the leopard's chances are slim. He's running out of options. He can't eat, and he can't risk turning his back on the lionesses to retreat. The lionesses launch into round two. He slashes at one with his front claws, one with his back. His blows sting, buying him another minute of life. Just enough time for an even more ambitious predator to close in. The lionesses turn their attention to the hyena. It's the moment the leopard has been waiting for. A lioness gives chase, but his natural agility pays off and he vanishes into the thick bush. He's one lucky leopard, up against four of his deadliest enemies. And this guy gets away hungry, but alive. Some places seem peaceful, but closer inspection reveals all-out warfare. The tropical hill forests of Kenya in East Africa are home to the African driver ant, one of nature's super predators. These merciless killers live in massive colonies, up to 22 million strong. They act as one, swarming and overpowering their prey. Soldier ants are the most aggressive and are just over an inch long. They will even attack crabs, many times their own size. This scout party can travel up to 80 feet in an hour in search of food, devouring everything in their path. They have to feed the colony's voracious appetite, and they've just stumbled across a potential gold mine, a towering termite's nest. These elaborate fortresses can extend up to 15 feet underground. Deep inside is a five-inch queen, a bonanza meal, if the ants can find a way in. A rare opening. The raid is on. Immediately, they give off pheromones. It's a call for the army to join the battle. Termites will defend their home to the death. A termite soldier raises the alarm by pounding his head on the ground. The whole nest goes into emergency lockdown. At its heart, the termite workers race desperately to build a wall to protect their queen. Without her, the whole colony will die out. The termite saliva contains a substance that mixes with soil and wood and hardens like concrete, forming an impenetrable inner vault. Up above in the tunnels, locked in jaw-on-jaw -jaw combat, both insects use their most lethal weapon, the mandibles. 
The ants' mandibles are thick layers of cuticle with sharp tips and are incredibly strong whether stretched or pinched. They're made of a composite of different fibrous proteins, similar to carbon fiber. The ant army seems to hold the advantage. The ants' bodies are covered all over with an armored shell called an exoskeleton, made of chitin, a super strong protein. But only the termite's head is armored, making its soft body extremely vulnerable to attack. The ants target the soft area between the termite's head and chest. In both insects, the razor-sharp mandibles are operated by enormous muscles, which take up a huge proportion of the head, so there's only space for a tiny brain. But the termites know the relentless killer ants have a weak point. They target the ants' neck joint just beneath the exoskeleton and decapitate them. And deep underground, the termites have another advantage, tunnel warfare. Ants kill their enemies by swarm, but in the narrow passageways of the nest, they struggle in one-to-one -one combat. It's costing the ants too many casualties to get deep enough into the nest to kill the termite queen. The ant army has to accept defeat. They'll have to find another meal that puts up less of a fight. The triumphant termites have hung on to their home, but it was an extremely close call. Time to review their breach in security. From one of the smallest predators to one of the biggest with one of the world's deadliest bites. There are over a million alligators living wild in Florida. With their armored bodies, muscular tails, and savage jaws, they're one fearsome reptile. Fully grown males can reach over 14 feet long and weigh close to 1,000 pounds. Unchanged for the last 65 million years, they're one of nature's greatest survivors. And when gator takes on gator, it's the clash of the titans. Golf and gators don't usually go together, but sometimes gators bring their battles right into town. On this Florida golf course, a player has discovered these two massive males in the midst of an all-out brawl. What the heck? They're fighting over breeding rights to the local females. It's early May, and that brings out the worst in these giant reptiles. Gators hate other gators stealing their women. <laughs> the bigger gators got the smaller guy in a savage lockdown. The gator's bite is one of the most powerful of any animal on Earth. Alligators have a bite pressure of over 100,000 pounds per square inch. That's the same as the weight of a small car pressing on the surface of a quarter. It hurts, but the smaller gator clamps his jaws onto his rival's vulnerable front leg. He thrashes his tail to try to maintain his grip. The gator's tail is his prime motor and makes up over a quarter of his total body mass. It's loaded with eight long muscles around the vertebra, which gives both flexibility and a tremendous source of power. Gators fight in short, sharp bursts. And their teeth are designed more for gripping than piercing flesh. Gators have around 80 teeth, which are hollow and often break off during fights. Underneath, a new tooth waits. It will be fully functional in just a few days. Gators go through up to 3,000 teeth in their lifetime. But the 
bigger gator is having no effect on the smaller guy's armor-plated skin. So he tries another strategy, grabbing the smaller guy by the tail to try to execute his killer move, the death roll. In the water, the gator would use leverage from his powerful tail to launch into a spin at almost 100 revolutions per minute. Turning at that speed, gators can both subdue and dismember prey. On land, it's a tough maneuver to pull off. But this fight needs a clear winner. Close to one ton of angry reptiles writhe on the ground. On his back and his tail trapped, the smaller gator is defeated. He won't be breeding around here anytime soon. Armored skin works for some animals. Others use deadly poison. Life is hard under the blazing sun of the Sonoran Desert. Temperatures can reach 120 degrees Fahrenheit, and there's often only three inches of rainfall a year. It's home to the Roadrunner, the inspiration for one of the world's best-loved cartoon characters. In the real world, these super speed demons stand around 20 inches tall and weigh just 11 ounces. They're powered by enormous leg muscles that make up nearly a quarter of their body weight and can easily outrun a human being. They dine on moisture-rich mammals to increase their water intake. But food to fuel these little sprinters is scarce in their dusty desert home. So when they come across something edible, they'll always try to eat it. Little snakes make a tasty snack. But big rattlesnakes are a different story. This time, taking on one of the deadliest reptiles in the desert, the wily little bird might have bitten off more than it can chew. This six-year-old male prairie rattlesnake is quietly enjoying the Sonoran desert sun. Cold-blooded reptiles, they're adapted for desert survival. They're so venomous, they can kill a horse over 1,000 times their own weight. He senses incoming danger. His forked tongue captures any chemicals given off by other animals. A roadrunner's on the prowl. She's taking a huge risk. Rattlesnakes like this eat roadrunners like her. He's 50 inches long and is not ready to be a roadrunner's dinner. He does what all angry rattlers do. He issues a threat with his tail. His rattle is made of dead tissue shaken by tiny muscles on either side of his tail. They flex and release as many as 90 times per second, twice as fast as the wing muscles of a hummingbird. But the feisty lady roadrunner is not intimidated. In this battle of two desert survivors, it's a question of who will eat whom. The rattler can strike at a speed of more than eight feet per second. The roadrunner puffs out her feathers to confuse the accuracy of his bite. His fangs are deadly, but she needs to target his head. Her strategy? Grab him by the neck, 
slap him hard and repeatedly on a rock to kill him. It could go either way. These two contenders are totally different, but they're evenly matched. Neither side backs down. But then the Rattler's Fang score a direct hit, and this time she feels it. Although Roadrunners can eat venomous snakes, they're not totally immune to their bite. With the venom racing through her body, this will be the last time she takes on a rattlesnake. For the snake, it'll just be a matter of minutes until he can enjoy his meal. From a deadly venomous attack to one of the most fearless animals on the entire planet, life doesn't get much tougher than in the Kalahari Desert. Here, the infamous honey badger is a crazy animal fight night contender that punches well above its weight. They get their name from raiding bees' nests for honey. Bad boys of the animal kingdom, they're constantly ravenous and will kill and eat just about anything they can get their claws on. Taking down a venomous snake is all in a day's work. They can eat 10 feet of it in one sitting. With their stocky bodies and muscular necks, they stand just over nine inches high at the shoulders. What they lack in size, they make up for in pure, unadulterated aggression. This mother honey badger is out hunting with her one-year-old cub. She spots some black-backed jackal pups and wants to eat them. The jackal parents immediately go on high alert. When it comes to protecting their kids, they'll stop at nothing. The mother honey badger moves in. For the jackal, Offense is the best defense. He has to keep her from his pups. Jackals kill their prey using a suffocating throat bite or simply tearing open their abdomen with their knife-like canines. But he can't get a firm grip on her thick folds of flesh. Now it's her cub that's under attack. Her attention is dangerously split as Jackal number two sinks sharp canines into Junior's backside. He instantly squats to protect his legs. This is no place for the uninitiated. The honey badger needs to get her son out of here before he becomes dog food. Junior needs to go back to fight school if he's going to help her bag jackal pups for dinner. If you're not strong enough to win a fight on your own, your best defense is to pay for protection. Limpets are one of the world's great clingers on. Their tiny teeth contain the strongest natural material on Earth. They attach themselves to rocks with a suction force five times as strong as a household vacuum cleaner. Living on the ocean floor of the Pacific coast, the rough keyhole limpet is nearly three inches long. To eat, they gently raise up and let their foot explore for algae. Related to sea snails, they're happy living life in the slow lane. One of their greatest predators is the king of the Pacific coast, the sunflower sea star. With a total of 24 arms and measuring 31 inches across, they're among the largest of all the sea stars. 
and they've got a voracious appetite to match. Large sunflower sea stars can gobble up to one and a half pounds of food in a single sitting. That's around 20% of their own body weight. This rough keyhole limpet is having a minor altercation with a tiny hermit crab. Then, much bigger trouble arrives. The sea star quickly sprawls over the limpet. His legs are covered in 15,000 tiny tube feet and are equipped with powerful suction cups. With all these little suckers, the sea star has four times the suction power of the limpet. He prizes her off the rock, exposing her soft, vulnerable underside. He prepares to devour the limpet. She looks delicious. But the limpet has a covert weapon to deploy. A hidden arm that can bite and bite. That's not the limpet, but her own personal bodyguard, a banded scale worm armed with a vicious nip. In exchange for a place to live, the worm provides defense when the limpet is under attack. His throat is equipped with powerful muscles used to wield not one, but two sets of jaws. He sinks them into the sea star, targeting the groove of the sea star's tube feet, right where it hurts the most. The sea star's soft tissue is no match for this painful ambush. He retreats. And even the tiny hermit crab gives him a little pinch for good measure. In this David and Goliath battle, the lowly limpet and her secret weapon have defeated a predator over a hundred times their combined weight. When it comes to pound for pound bust ups, fierce brutality is a decisive factor. Great black backed gulls are the largest seagulls in the world. They make themselves at home in our towns and cities. Soaring on a wingspan of 67 inches, they're the thugs of the waterfront. They bully other birds into giving up food and have even been known to attack eagles. So when black-backed gulls fight each other, you've never seen anything like it. It's early May in Western Europe. And for these black-backed seagulls, the race is on to establish a nest for breeding season. This adult male claims a top spot, sheltered from the wind. Only 54% of their chicks make it to adulthood, so it's crucial he keeps it. But on returning, he finds a squatter challenging the rights to his territory, issuing an immediate eviction order he jabs at his rival's eye. A beak-on-beak tug-of-war shows they're an even match. The squatter's beak is three inches long, narrow, and extremely sharp. Armed with a hook at the end, it can easily tear through flesh. But for now, he's using it to keep the landlord's beak from getting hold of him. Both these bullies use the massive power in their wings to try and get the upper hand. The muscles that power their wings make up around 20% of their total body weight. Both gulls' bloodlines are at stake. The squatter gull decides to up the ante. Leaping up, he attempts a classic move, descending in a miniature dive bomb, aiming for the eye. But he misses. The homeowner lands a hard nip to the wing. Claiming victory, he chases the squatter off his territory. He hangs on to his home, 
and the squatter will have to house hunt in another neighborhood. A sharp beak is nothing compared to 14 spikes and a ton of pummeling force. Oklahoma, home to the largest land mammal in North America, the American bison. Weighing almost 2,000 pounds and standing six feet at the shoulder, these behemoth battering rams are loaded with power. From June to September, they smash into each other to establish rights to their bloodline. But now it's November, and their next big battle is a do-or-die fight for food. Bison need to eat 1.6% of their body mass a day. That's 32 pounds, or the equivalent of 128 quarter pounders. Almost 10% of adult bison die during the winter from lack of food. They share their home with another of North America's great land beasts. Standing five feet at the shoulder and clocking in at 900 pounds, the elk is another major contender on animal fight night. Like bison, they fight with their heads. They can kill other elk with their deadly headgear. When these two go head to head, Neither wants to back down. This six-year-old bison is facing off with a mature bull elk. They size each other up. The bison is North America's biggest land animal. The elk is under half his weight, but he's got nerves of steel. He brandishes his four and a half feet long antlers, pointing 14 jagged spears right in the bison's face. Elk's antlers grow and shed each year. They're made of layer upon layer of cartilage, which mineralizes into bone as hard as marble. They can grow as fast as an inch per day. What elks have in weaponry, bison more than make up for in brute force. The bison can charge with the same force as a Harley-Davidson motorcycle traveling at a speed of 92 miles per hour. He's built to sustain massive impacts to his head. His brain is protected by a system of bone struts, which divide the inner and outer walls of the skull. Facing close to one ton of solid muscle, what the elk lacks in weight he's making up for in bravado. The bison's huge hump contains foot-long bones, which anchor massive neck muscles that create a powerful charging force. These muscles also hold up his enormous head, which can weigh up to 75 pounds. He launches his full power at the elk. But to avoid getting stabbed by the elk's dagger-like antlers, he has to hit the elk dead center, smack between the eyes. At last, the elk realizes he might not have the muscle to tough it out with the bison. He's up for still one more challenge, but one warning charge is all it takes to make him change his mind. This time, the bigger bison's brawn comes out on top.